If you're ready to walk in authority, help finding your purpose and destiny, empowering you to live today. At life. I'm called to the purpose of the church, and as I prepared for this message, it brought me. Uh, great joy in today, as many of you may know, after a second service, we're going to have a really uh, great presentation and dedication of our cafe uh, in the name of Thomasine Walker, a uh, former member and board member that has gone home to be with the Lord. Really looking forward to that, and as I study for this message, uh, the call and the purpose of the church the call and the purpose of the church. And I thought about as being a pastor set in order, and I say set in order in the church, because Jesus Christ is the head of the church. How many of us know that? He is the head. And the word of God says, and he set all things in order. He set them all in order as they pleased him. And so even though he may have pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets, uh, uh, and apostles, it doesn't matter what the fivefold ministry gift is, you must respect the order that God uses them to set the order in the church, and they must respect you, the church. And so it's a mutual respect that must go on. One of the most diabolical things within the body of Christ, both internally uh, and that tries to come up against it externally, is a spirit of rebellion. And, and the spirit of rebellion, the word of God says in Samuel, it's as witchcraft. And witchcraft is a twisted way of practicing spiritual and godly things. How many of us know the devil doesn't have any new tricks? He's not that bright. All he is is a deceiver and an imitator. He really, he really is not as great as he, he even pretends to be because he, he's not even an origin, originator of anything that he uses. Everything that he uses really belongs to God. Amen. Even your victory, even your success in life, which comes from God, he tries to perpetrate as if he is greater in your victory and greater in your success to come up against you and apprehend you from it. And God has ordained each and every one of us that are present to reach our destiny. And, and today we're going to talk about destiny. It's so important for you to know God wants you to reach your destiny. It does not matter if you are working, if you're out of job, out, out of work right now, uh, uh, if you're in school, haven't finished your degree, you're not quite sure what you're called to do. I want you to understand that God says, I know my thoughts towards you. How many of us know that you're not going to change the way God thinks? Amen. God says, my thoughts towards you are thoughts of peace and not of evil that you would have an expected end. So it's never God's desire, never God's desire that you would be hurt, listen to me carefully, that you would be hurt. God does not teach you by hurting you. He does not teach you by making you sick. He doesn't teach you by making you broke. He does not teach you by frustrating you, teach you by keeping a support system out of your life like a good church. He wants you to have life and have life more abundantly. Now, Satan's job is to come to kill, steal, and destroy. You know, my granddaughter and I, uh, we spent time together, and we got this thing, and, and I actually got it from her. And so, uh, in teaching her certain things, uh, I, I, I'm a very practical teacher just by nature as a pastor. And uh, I don't believe that the things of God, the purpose of God, the vision of God is complicated in any way. So, what I have decided to do uh, uh, with my granddaughter uh, not having her father in her life stepping in, uh, I, I have taught her how to make sense out of life. At seven years old, she understands we have a principle. And the principle that I have taught my daughter, does these things go together? All right. All right. In other words, whatever happened in your life, ask yourself, baby, if they said this, but you know this is the truth. Do they go together? And so she, I asked her the other day, I said, how was school? She said, such and such, and so-and-so did such and such, such and such. But I ain't say nothing. I didn't go play with them because that didn't go together. <laughs> I 
look at your name and say, do you know what goes together in your life? <laughs> See, because then you won't be hanging out with people that are, that, that are discouraging you and keeping you from vision and keeping you from your destiny and keeping you from your success and keeping you from your joy. And things that go together and may not go together could be things in your family and out of your family. Could be things at work and outside of work. Could be things at school and outside of school. But you must know what you go together with. Flash Bulletin, Lifeway is not for everybody. As a pastor, I realize that I understand it. I humbly accept that fact. Because not everybody go together with protocol and order. There are some people, I don't care how long they're in the church, they are bent on doing things their way. They are bent on doing what they want to do. That bent is actually twisted on, I can say it this way, they're twisted on doing what they want to do. They're twisted on not following protocol. They twist it on lying. They twist it on cheating. They twist it on manipulating. Now, what that's called is wicked. Are you, the, the, spiritually, it's called wicked. Now, you got to understand, if I'm trying to get things straight in my life, wicked don't go. Wicked don't go together with holy. Wicked don't go together with righteous. If I'm trying to get healed in my life, I can't be putting my mouth on other people. That don't go. I'm trying to get delivered in my life. And I'm cheating and, 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 and I'm, uh, I'm slandering folk that don't go together. God can't straighten me out and I'm trying to, I'm trying to make everything else crooked. All right. I've got to understand what goes together. And this is, say elementary, my dear. That used to be a nursery song. Elementary, my dear. Two plus two is four. Remember that song? Something's just not that hard. <laughs> when it comes to God, certain things are just not that hard. Right. I was dealing with a young man, and, and uh, Sunday evening was spending some time with him, and he, and he told me what he was doing. I said, brother, you got too much time on your hands. He said, well, I'm doing this, and he had his dream and vision. Very smart, very intelligent young man. And uh, I told him, I said, well, you need to, have some, you need to make some money. I, I, I get you want to do this, and I get you have this vision. And I says, but you need to bring some money in. You got you. You got a child. You, you need to make some money. Yeah, Pastor, but I got a blah, blah. I said, okay, good. So we start talking. Then we met for lunch. I said, get a plan together. Do this, do that. I, in other words, Put some stuff together that goes. This is a real simple message. That's my hook. Put some stuff that goes together together. He said, yeah, but I got it. I said, no, no, no. You've done a lot. Reach. Look at your name and say, reach back. For your gifts and talents. See, if you, you watch this. Through the anointing of God, you can pull those things forth. He pulled them forward and he says, well, I just don't know. I'm going to go to L.A. I'm going to do blah, blah. And then long story short, we met on Thursday for lunch, told him to make some calls prior to then. He had an appointment scheduled at a university. He had, a, he had an appointment scheduled where he was going to go get a job. And where he was going to go was outside of what he had already been doing. Long story short, he met with the people. All we did was put together with who he was, presented it, starting work July 1st. They're creating a position for him. Yeah. Let me tell you something. There are things in your life. You can straighten them out and they can become successful if you understand what you go together with. Quit fighting the grain. How long, the word of God says, to, to, how long will you kick, Saul, how long will you kick your foot against the prick? Find out what you go together with. Amen. Quit singing in the gospel and then singing secular. Make up your mind, either be secular or be gospel. Right. 
but just be one of them. Make up your mind, be how to go. I'm not talking about nobody. If you're going to preach the gospel, live the gospel. Don't just preach it and then live some other kind of life. Are you listening to me? Find out what do I go together with. If you're a hard worker, hang around hard workers. Don't hang around lazy, trifling, good for nothing. Low. Oh! You want to go somewhere, hang around with shakers and makers. Find out what you go together with. Quit dating folk. Watch this. If you don't have what you don't have that much time. You're almost 30 years old and you dating folk. No, 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 no. Have them fill out an application. You fill out an application. Find out if you go together. If you're not intended, planning on getting married, you ain't got time to be dating. See, see, I just used the term I don't think they use today. We used to, see, when I, when I met my wife, I asked her, would she go with me? And see, if you was with somebody, say, oh, do y'all go together? That's my hook. That's my hook. See, to go together means that, hey, we was one. The word of God says, be not unevenly yoked with the ungodly. In other words, don't get involved with twisted people. Now, this don't just mean married. This means even if you're not married. This means friends, associates. See, if you know who you are, you can change what's around you. But if you don't know who's a, who you are, who's around you will change you. Let me give you some word on this. Go to, I hope you can handle this. You're going to find out today what you go together with. Yeah. See, you might be working a job right now. You don't go together with that. Right. <laughs> and you got to find out them few little trinkets they're giving you ain't, ain't going to get you to your destiny. Yeah. Right. Now, I didn't just say go turn in your pink slip tomorrow, but you need to find out what you go with. All of a sudden, your boss going to start talking. Instead of you taking it personal, all of a sudden, you're going to hear wong, 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 wong. <laughs> you're going to turn around and say, I got it, Pastor. I don't go, I don't go together. Don't, we don't go together. <laughs> Look at your name and say, don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. It's just business. It's business. I didn't say business. I said business. Bit, 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 business. Go on. God will, point number one, God will accomplish his desire through those who yield themselves. I must yield myself. I watch believers. So many times they miss their blessing because they, they got out of alignment right before it hit. Uh, Pastor, I've been trying. It just ain't happened yet. How about you just have not gotten to the right door? God had to bring you to the revelation of what you go with. God is not confused about you. Right. Let me tell you something. God is more concerned about your life and what you're doing and what you're going through more than anything you would ever imagine. I want to talk to my deacons for a minute. You're called to be a deacon. You're not just called to be around deacons. You need to know what you go with. And that integrity, that character is what's going to cause you to be a deacon. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere with this. If you're a minister, you need to find out what you go with. I need to find out my call, my purpose, to find out what I go with. See, because if not, it's not necessarily that the other deacons are bad or the other ministers are good or indifferent or bad. But what you must understand is this. You must understand that you must understand what is your call and purpose. See, that, <clears throat> there are a lot of cars on the freeway, but only certain cars can be in certain lanes at one time. 
And there's rules, there's protocol to getting in the diamond lane. You can't just get in diamond lane all by yourself. <laughs> you need to have other people in your car in the state of California. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's three. Sometimes you got to, I guess, be in fast track, all this other kind of stuff now. In other words, you've got to know what God has called you to do. Go with me to uh, uh, Haggai, Haggai chapter 1 and verse 7. Haggai chapter 1 and verse 7. This is a very, very interesting discourse here in Haggai because what's happening in the book of Haggai, I want to give you, give you an example. The church had broken down. So God is going to call leaders in place and First thing they're going to do is put order and protocol and rules and regulations because we need to rebuild the temple, not just the building, but the people. You need to quit spending so much time figuring out with what you don't go with and start focusing on what you do go with. I'm going to say that again. Quit looking at everything that's wrong with the issue. Quit looking at what's stopping you from reaching your destiny and find out what you need to do to reach your destiny. <laughs> don't, worry, don't worry about what, what don't fit as much as you ought to be concerned with what does fit. L listen to what it says in verse 1. <clears throat> We're in chapter 1 of Haggai, verse 1. And in the second year of Darius, the king in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet. So the first thing he does, he sends a word by the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, the governor of Judah, and Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, saying, in other words, here's what he does real quick. He gives a prophetic word into the earth realm. It comes down from the portal. I'm bringing it down now to modern day times. A word of God right now comes down from the portal. I'm giving you a word from the portal. The portal, the word comes down from the portal into the church. It then is to land upon both you as kings and priests. That's why it came upon uh, 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 these individuals that got the word from the prophet. You are kings and priests. Quit just thinking of yourselves as individuals that come to church. You are a king or you are a priest before God. Now you must understand, what he's about to do next is tell them what they go together with. See, you've got to start acting like a king before anybody will ever recognize that you're a king. Uh, Aretha Franklin best put it this way. You've got to respect yourself. See, 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 you're going to teach people how to treat you. If you don't teach them how to treat you, they will tell you how you need to be treated. Why are you talking to me this way? You think you can talk to me this way, but you can't talk to me this way because what you're saying, talking loud and saying nothing, I don't go with that. Telling me that you don't think I can do it, I don't go with that. Telling me that I'm not anointed for it, I don't go with that. Telling me I'm just designed for that, I don't go with that. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more than anointed. I'm more than appointed. I'm a child of the mighty God. I'm a child of the living King. You don't tell me with what I go with. But you have to be in order. So you just can't be doing things every ritual way and then talk about the anointing of God's on you. Listen to this. He goes on to say, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not <laughs> come. The time that the Lord's house should not be built. Here it is, the naysayers. Here's the people. See, they don't go, these people right here, they didn't go, they, somebody said, you said, what you say, sister? They didn't go with it. Right off the bat, the word of the Lord comes down, speaks to the body of Christ, priests and kings, and shown up there's a group of people rise up and say, well, no, no, that ain't happening. See, the moment you make a natural decision in your life and with your life to glorify God, 
that you desire to trigger the supernatural power of God and the grace of God, there's going to become some twisted, some wicked folk in your face trying to talk you out of what God says you go with. You, you didn't figure it out you're a child, a, a God coming to life where you didn't figure it out you're a king and a priest. You didn't figure it out you more than just some religious, some, some instrument uh, uh, to be verbated from, from, from things of uh, uh, past and your strongholds and soulish towers. But you have a mind and you can think with this word and there's some stuff that go together and God's changing your life. And then all of a sudden there's somebody that come. You didn't figure it out that you got priestly garments on. You got kingly garments on. And they coming to you trying to talk you into taking one of them off at a time that you can go back and be the naked king that you were before. There's this small book and it's this book. It was about this king and he was naked. But the people around him was telling him that he was all that. And pretty soon he thought he was all that and was walking around buck naked. Let the word of God define who you are. You say in these latter days, Pastor, you know, I've seen a lot of people, you know, I thought they would be doing this. And I, let me tell you something. The word of God says in the latter days, many will fall away from the faith. See, there's one thing to go to church and there's another thing to be in the faith. You know, it was best put in our board meeting yesterday. One of the board members said, you know, Pastor, we got a great core, and we do. This ministry got a great core. We got a great group of people. But I'm here to tell you as your pastor, you meant to make sure one thing that we go together with is this word. Yeah. It's the word that we go together with. Yeah. It's the word that will keep you. Because your pastor, I'm concerned about if something break out in your life, we can get you healed, get you delivered, get you set free, yeah. get you built back up. You can lose money and get money back, but you can't lose your mind and get that back. Uh -huh. So you can't get back your mind. That song said, my mind has been blown to bits. I was just about to call it quits. And everyday problems, I couldn't stand up prayer. See, that, that's where he was wrong. He should have been praying. He should have knew God. He should have knew what he went with before everyday problems came along. See, we want to go to God after everyday problems come along. And God says, if you was going with me to begin with, you might have not have faced that everyday problem. Your mind wouldn't have got blown to bits. A lot of times folk, they full of hell, full of confusion. Just every opportunity they get to stir something up like a hornet's nest. Just was waiting, was waiting for a moment. Just just jump on it like a hyena in the wild. And everybody know you crazy but you. Everybody, everybody. Everybody know you crazy. Back straight. Next verse. <laughs> then came the word of a. Here it goes again. This is not the prophet's word. It's the word of who? It's the word of who? It's the word of who? The word of the. Bye. So all Haggai did was bring it. It wasn't his word. I want to make that clear. The prophet saying. It is time for you. I love this. See, God's getting ready to do something. God, the Spirit of the Lord is doing something right here in Lifeway. All right. and, and folk think that it's time for the church. It's time for the building. It's time for that. No, it's time for Hallelujah. Now, here, here's the thing. Who's it really going to be time for? Whoever decides to go with it. Quit, quit complaining, quit whining, quit griping. Get out of that murmuring club. Yeah. All right. You know how they have the 700 club? Get out of the 6-6 six, six club. Get out of there. Yeah. Step
step over into life. Yeah. Step over to who's going with God. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had a pastor calling. I said, you better think about what you said. And I knew he was joking. But, but, you know, he had heard some things about what was happening in my life. Absolutely outside of this church. See, when God's hand is on you, God's hand is on you. See, if I'm going with God, I'm going with God. He heard about something that had happened to me in L.A. He heard about what was going on. He literally called me. He literally called me. And he said to me, he said, Pastor, I just want to know when you're going to get out of line. I said, what do you mean? He said, it seemed like you just, you just in line talking to God and ain't nobody else got a chance. Seemed like you got a direct line. You know, somebody else want to talk to him. <laughs> and I knew he was joking. I knew he was joking. <laughs> but he recognized that I was going with somebody. That there was somebody else making me look a little bit better. Come on, son. Don't go with nobody that's going to bring you down. You go with somebody that's going to lift you. You go. Watch this. You take a step up. Don't take a step down. If I'm going to go with somebody, I want to be made the better, not the worse. I want to bring something to the table. Don't ask me to go with you. It ain't nothing on the table. You miserable, frustrated, busted, disgusted. Then you want me to come on and hang with you. I'm sorry. I don't go with that. Don't go together. Now I'm saying what you want to say. I'm saying what you really think. But you're afraid about hurting people's feelings. You better recognize it's your time. I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody that said, it's my time. I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of being frustrated. I'm tired of talking job. I'm tired of wow, 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 wow. Who you go with? What goes together? I want to say this too. If you got children, you better recognize this. Because you're teaching them what goes together. They watching you. Watching you. I can tell. By, look. Now why do I go there? Because it triggers your soul. Soon as I said just that one verse, you knew exactly what song I was talking about. I can tell by the look in your eyes. There you go, see? And I'm going back to this old school. This is when people was in love. This is when people were talking about they was in love. They weren't talking about shoot me in the chest. I got my gats out. Bam, 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 bam. I want to hear about shooting me in the chest. I want to hear about what goes together. See, back old school, we talked about what goes together. Back in old school, we talked about love. We talked about harmony. We talked about overcoming trials and tribulations and governmental opposition. And we talked about what went together. Come on. Who have life way? I know you done got a little older, but who have bewitched you? Who have come and twisted you all up? There was a time you were smart. There was a time you could think your way out of a paper bag. There's a time you left that stuff and knew what did not go to. You know what go together. You know where that salesman is trying to sell you something and it's a bunch of jive? You know they don't go together with your budget. You know that car don't go together. It's your time. And I'm, I, I, I got I to gotta, I gotta give it all to you. Well, I want to encourage you, I want to inspire you. But I got to tell you the truth. Not all times and seasons come back. Not all times and seasons come back. I, I, I'm just going to keep it real because, see, I won't get upset with me. 
I won't go out here and think that pastor was just talking about me. All right. I ain't here to hit you. Amen. But I sure don't want to miss you. Yes, sir. 